When you open the screen tool, you will start at the canvas at your desk, where you can place multiple elements and visually organize them. But it's very easy to outgrow that single canvas. So in this video, I will teach you how to give one step towards networked note taking while taking full advantage of multiple boards and omnipresent cards. Let's check it out. This video is part of a Scrintle for Beginners series sponsored by Scrintle. So if you want to have access to all the videos in the series, make sure to check the link in the description below this video. Let's think of a real situation. In a day-to-day -day scenario, you are probably working on multiple tasks and many small projects all in parallel. So you may be taking notes about something that you are reading, when a meeting comes up and then you stop everything to take meeting notes. Then the meeting finishes up and then you remember that you have a deadline come up, so you stop to work on a report that you have to write. And then, by the end of the day, another meeting comes up where you need to brainstorm together with your team. Now, imagine all these cards from completely different contexts all mixed up in your desk. A mess, isn't it? So that's when we start organizing our cards into multiple boards. So each board can hold a different context, which could be a project, something that you're reading, a meeting note, or pretty much anything that you want to represent. So you can start to think about your cards and boards as information spaces. And those are spaces that when you are in them, you can have access to certain type of information that is meaningful in that context. Pretty much like in your house, where you can access certain tools in your kitchen and different tools in your home office, for example. In Scrinto, you can organize your information contextually, either as a card, if the information is textual, or as a board, if you want to visually organize information or create a composition with multiple elements. But the main difference between Scrinto and, well, your kitchen is that in Scrinto, the same element can exist in multiple information spaces. In real life, for example, you cannot have the same scissor appear in your office, in your kitchen, and in your workshop at the exact same time. But in Scrinto, you can. And that's what I like to call omnipresent elements. And that means that the exact same element can appear in multiple information space at the same time. And these are useful because in reality, your work contexts do not exist in isolation. The meeting that you took, for example, is probably related to the reports that you are trying to write. So it's often the case that some, but not all the information from one context is also relevant to another context. So in that case, you can just choose to use the same card for both contexts. So you can place the same card in multiple boards by just copying and pasting or by bringing it back from the archive. That means when you change the content of a card anywhere it appears, that change will be reflected everywhere else where you see that same card. And that's valid for cards, but boards as well, as you can add boards inside of a board and create links to boards as well. When you start using multiple boards and having the same element in multiple spaces, that's when the screen to start gets interesting. And that's also when you start making Scrinto yours. It becomes all about how you organize your information around the context that you care about. But if you think that our journey through this Scrinto for Beginners course is done, I'm pleased to say that we're just halfway there. So now that you know that you can create multiple information space with cards and boards, and you can use links to navigate through them, how can we ensure that you not get lost? So in the next video, we'll explore what are the different screens in Scrinto and how we can navigate through them. So I see you there.